Hello, my fabulous friends. Jenny Lee here. Today's discussion is about ADHD and why I call myself the ADHD CEO. My introduction with ADHD began when my son was five. He was a very bright little boy. However, he was also a very active little boy, and this is not something that I could get under control, and his preschool and kindergarten teachers also had the same problem. And boy, do I have stories I could tell you about his antics. <laughs> but we'll save those for another episode. <laughs> We went the traditional route and took him to the doctor, and then he was sent to a specialist and subsequently was diagnosed with ADHD. And then, of course, the process of elimination to find the right medication to work for him. This is very stressful on the parents when your child is having behavior problems and you cannot seem to get those problems under control. And as a parent, you feel like you should be able to and others are sort of expecting you to. And so you take him to the doctor and then you're required to give medication and of course, you have concerns um, about this medication and the side effects. It just so happens that my church had posted in the bulletin that they needed someone to start a group for parents of children with ADHD. Ha! Ah! Well, <laughs> I felt like, you know, that was me and I felt like that was my calling to um, answer that call at the time and reach out to help other parents. Um, I felt like I had become an expert because I had read so many books and discussed at length uh, these issues with the doctors. I'm kind of like that when I, well, I mean, any, any parents like that when it's something about their child, but I always do a lot of research and anyway, it's amazing that when you reach out to help other people, it's generally you who gets the biggest blessing. I was the leader of the group of parents with ADHD, and so I brought people together who were able to provide support and share our stories and experiences and help one another, you know, through this challenge with our children. You know, as parents, we have to remind ourselves that we're people too. You know, we have emotions and reactions and desires for our children. And we don't want to see them go through pain or challenges um, and to be signaled out for being different um, and unfortunately for being a problem. This, this is harmful and emotionally uh, draining for everyone. You know, it, this turns into emotional and self-confidence problems for the parents. And, you know, what started to become obvious was that ADHD did not just sprout from nowhere, okay? It didn't, did, didn't just sprout up out of the ground. Um, in fact, it usually was the same sort of challenges that one or most of the parents likely had themselves, either as a child or currently as an adult, as the parent. Um, it was also obvious that the children who were labeled with ADHD were generally very bright and therefore above average from their peers. I found this to be very consistent. It was during this time that I learned uh, about an adult ADHD study that um, a local university, Furman University, was having. 
they were conducting, and I started to realize that perhaps the ADHD my son has was something he inherited from me. <laughs> so I agreed to participate in the study where, to my benefit, they gave me uh, extensive testing and diagnostic for no charge. This was a big blessing because I was a single parent and entrepreneur and without insurance to cover this expense. And the study showed, yes, in fact, I have ADHD, and then I went to my doctor with the results and was prescribed medication. The medication did work, but it did take away emotional interaction with others as well. Also, the side effects were terrible when the medication was wearing off. It was just like very draining, like your body was just being drained. So my son came to me one day and he, he said that he did not like the way that the medication made him feel. Well, by this time, uh, he was doing well in school because the medication, you know, did give him uh, the ability to um, be more focused. And um, so, since he wasn't have the issues, I told him that I would allow him to get off of the medication as long as he understood that it was his responsibility to make sure that he did the required work at school and did not have any trouble because he could not control his attention. I explained to him that as soon as this was a problem, then I would take that decision back and he would have to take medication again. You know, once, once you get the problem under control, then you start to look at it and realize what it is. The negative feeling sort of subside for a little while. So that's kind of where we were. And um, so what was the most amazing realization is that uh, ADHD is, in fact, an incorrect term. It is not deficit of attention, but abundance of attention. And because there is abundance of attention, many times projects and tasks do not get completed. The problem with people who have ADHD is actually a self-management and organizational challenge. Of course, children are not equipped to have self-management and organization, so this is why they act out, you know, because so many things do get their attention. And then they become frustrating to the parents and the teachers, and then this causes emotional reactions from the children as well as the parents and causes relational problems. Unfortunately, the only thing the medical society does is solve it with, prob with, with medication. That's the only answer that they have is to solve it with medication. As in the case with my son, who once he was old enough to become aware of what he didn't like and that he understood what he needed to do to not have to take the medication, um, he became focused and organized because he desired to do that and he recognized that he needed to do that. This was also the same realization for myself because I am a serial entrepreneur. I keep myself very busy with many thoughts and research and analysis on all my ideas, which is really a lot of fun. <laughs> and I love being an entrepreneur. However, 
the ADHD was a problem with managing my attention and my organization. So I've had to learn and still struggle with this and continue to learn more about organizing myself and my focus. Um, I'm a organizational addict, so to speak. I mean, I buy every kind of calendar, every kind of, you know, tool and trick, you know. So don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not saying that a person can just manage themselves better and that's all it takes. Um, because I actually take, you know, a lot of supplements for various health benefits and I take supplements that are good for my brain as well. Um, I try to eliminate the junk food and processed food because they're also not good for your brain. Now I didn't say I do this perfectly, not at all, but I am focused on it and I try to lessen this in my life. So I try to give my body things that are that are good for me, that are healthy for me. So I have a new meaning for the acronym ADHD. <laughs> and uh, remember I'm ADHD, so sometimes I gotta have more than one. So in this case, it's attention, determination, discipline, and discovery. That's where the ADHD part comes in happen daily, okay? Attention, determination, discipline, and discovery happen daily. So please join me on my path and you can experience ADHD the way I experience it. <laughs> and you know, we probably will learn some things together. So follow me on Instagram and Facebook and please subscribe to my YouTube channel where you will see a lot more in-depth episodes um, about me, about entrepreneurialism. I love to flip houses. Um, I'm ADHD, remember, so there's always lots of topics that interest me. And um, so 